Well, good morning and welcome to my garden on a nice morning, a nice Sunday morning in mid-April. And here I'm going to take you for a quick tour of parts of my garden. I'm in the middle of a couple of fairly busy projects, so I won't be able to spend a whole lot of time. But I wanted to show you a couple of things that are rather special. The first is right here in front of me is my little Syringa Red Pixie. As you see, is loaded with buds. And in about another week or so, this plant is going to light up with lots of gorgeous red buds that then open to beautiful fragrant pink flowers. This particular plant, you can find out more about it on this channel. I did a video featuring this Max Peterson hybrid that turned up as a chance seedling in his arboretum in the middle of Nebraska. And one of the amazing quotations I love about this plant, which incidentally has been here now probably about 12, 13 years, and never missed a bat. This is a really hardy, reliable, great little lilac if you're thinking about planting a lilac that puts on a great performance, never bothered by any pests and diseases, and just a wonderful plant. But anyway, I wanted to say that when I was talking to Max once about it, he said, David, if it grows here in the middle of cornfields, in the middle of Nebraska, it will grow anywhere, which I think just says a lot about it. And, and I encourage you to go elsewhere on this channel and then just search for Syringa Red Pixie and you'll get a whole lot more information about it. As you see in our garden here, we really put a lot of effort into trying to establish ground covering plants. We're busy working people. We don't have a whole lot of time to be out in the garden because of things like this. Lots of activity going on. So therefore, it's important that whatever we do in the garden looks after pretty much after itself. And that includes varieties of plants and ground covering things like the hellebores up here in our woodland garden that really just don't need a whole lot of care and attention. The little muscari here are starting just to come out to flower and of course the star of the show in this part of the garden at this time of year is the magnolias, the one that they affectionately call one of the girls, the varieties that again is also featured on this channel. If you search, you'll be able to find a video that I did some years ago that really talk about the merits of it, and you can see how magnolias light up the garden in early spring. The little muscari here, the grape hyacinths, I think is interesting. I planted these with an electric drill, an auger on an electric drill, probably about 17, 18 years ago, just basically put in the bulbs and from then until now they have just flowered regularly every year never bothered by any deer or any issues like that up they come and they provide a beautiful kind of blue cover covering that goes over the ground and helps to set off lots of other plants of course the key part of our garden here is the little stream that runs down through it over the years we've did various things as you see to counteract erosion including lots of walls that help to just stop it from eroding away the bank. And here we also grow quite a few narcissus. I love these little pheasant eye ones here. They flower a bit later than most of the other ones. They again are probably in here 17, 18 years, something like that. Never get any attention and up they come and regularly flower. Then here we're using some of the grasses on the bank. When we set out with the garden, we tried to retain some of the trees so that we would keep natural cover. And then at the end of this path, as we walk through here, you'll see that we have an, an Hanuki cypress. This is one that we brought with us from a previous garden and transplanted it. And it kind of provides a focal point here at the end of this path. And then as I work my way around the corner here, you'll see that right in front of us is probably one of the finest little trees that anybody can grow in their garden. This is, of course, for anybody that knows it, the paper bark maple. This is Acer grisium that forms a very important part of the landscape. 
It's really hardy from China originally, stands out at any time of the year, but particularly during the winter time when you see this beautiful peeling mahogany bark. Regrettably, these are not easy to propagate. Uh, they don't produce really viable seed that much and they're really difficult to root from cuttings and graft so it tends to be a fairly expensive tree and also one that's difficult to get but it's worth seeking out because of its value it's really really important and then another shot going across the bank on the other side you'll see how we use drifts of uh, hellebores and also narcissus to kind of brighten up the scene and particularly give um, a nice brightness to the early spring scene and over there where the deer roam freely it's important that all the plants that are grown over there are ones that the deer don't eat but my reason for taking the tour today was to show you this look at this this is magnolia butterflies a beautiful magnolia that grows about 18, 20 foot high with these gorgeous bright yellow flowers that look so good against the sky. This is one I planted probably about 17 or 18 years ago and every year, I mean every year, it breaks out with these gorgeous lemon flowers that look a little bit like tulips. Now they, when you get in close to them, have also a nice kind of lemon fragrance that comes from it. And what's remarkable about this is that it was bred by a legend in Magnolia world called Phil Savage. Phil dedicated his life to breeding magnolias in Blooming Hills in Michigan. And this is probably the best known and probably the most popular of all of the 30 odd hybrids that he bred and introduced during his lifetime. Regrettably, we lost Phil in 2002, but he left with us the remarkable heritage of this wonderful plant. Now, one thing I'll just say about it, and that is that this is one that when you go to the garden center, you're unlikely to buy it when it's in flower because it doesn't really start to flower until it becomes an older specimen and therefore it's one that you're likely to perhaps walk past. But it's important that you remember the name Magnolia Butterflies and if you have a space for it in your garden and you're able to enjoy this really bright, beaming, beaming easy to grow, reliable flowering one, then I would suggest that you definitely make a note of it and see if you can find a place for it in your garden because over the years when it's been in here I have done nothing but just admire it year after year. I said reliable flowering and that's true. This flowers a little bit later than some of the others. You see the plant over there is Magnolia stellata, the star magnolia beautiful too and most years does fine but then every now and then it will get hit by a frost and in 17 years or so of growing this plant here I only really remember one year when we had a late frost that nabbed it and therefore turned the flowers all brown so you know you have to obviously take a risk with early flowering plants like this but this was one of the attributes of this variety in his breeding he bred it to be a little later flowering, he bred it to be more compact and above all he bred it to have these bright lemon yellow flowers that don't fade and that's what makes this such a spectacular plant and why I broke off from my gardening work this morning because I wanted you to be able to see it. This is Magnolia Butterflies, a fantastic little small growing tree that gets to about 20 maybe 22 23 or so foot high and as you see is absolutely spectacular if you've got the space for it and the inclination and the patience to wait to let it grow up and flower magnolia butterflies